Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the last two rounds in Austria and we also have to talk German Cup final and a teeny bit of a relegation. Um, you can see here in the background there's one jersey new unpacking video will come probably in a few weeks from now <laughs> but you know full disclosure I'm shooting this now mere hours from Milan's last game at Sassuolo. I am turning slowly into a nervous wreck. I decided I'm gonna do this video now. I I to calm my nerves and B to have a video ready to kind of shoot it and so on. Also, there are playoff matches still. I mean, I have a relegation match, uh, the second leg in Germany that will come on Monday and then uh, the Conference League playoff in Austria which uh, starts uh, is going for the entire next week with my team Lusk heavily involved uh, in that one. Um, this will be then be part of, I'm planning to do like last season, a full playoff um, uh, video over all the leagues in Europe. So just as a heads up there. Um, I will start in Germany first, but I want to tell you that the, what I'm covering in Austria, uh, it was absolute madness, especially the fight against relegation. Uh, the way it is all set up, it was just unbelievable. I mean, um, it was there was a magic escape in there. And yeah, uh, at one point early on in the first half of that, uh, it could have gone either way. And then it was still uh, up until the last second, it was tied between two teams. And again, Lask was heavily involved in there. Uh, Lask, who at that time was actually kind of secure, at least in relegation trouble, but uh, four out of six teams technically could have gotten relegated. And the way it turned out, one really has to ask a question, is this really fair, the format? My answer, it absolutely is not. Uh, and then also uh, for the final European spots, there are also quite some things happening. So, you know, strap yourself in. We will actually start with the first leg of relegation in Berlin. There were two matches in Berlin uh, with Hertha meeting Hamburg. Um, was not a good match. I, I, I want to watch it because I think there's always, there's always something great happening. And last season, remember, it was Köln against Kiel, where Kiel won the away uh, match, the first one, and then lost big at home. Um, what makes this special is that those are two absolutely massive clubs and they play in massive stadiums and um, that adds to the weightiness. As I said, the match was not good. Hertha had in the first half a goal disallowed uh, and then I think it was uh, Kyle who wanted to do a cross that ended up in the goal which proved to be the difference with Hertha not having the strength to overcome this, you could see the nervousness. I honestly think that while this is advantage Hamburg, and I would really love to see Hamburg back. The other side, um, Hertha, is also a team I would like to see in the Bundesliga, so I really don't know where to go with that one. Uh, so I just want to see how it plays out. And while it is advantage Hamburg, I don't think this is a done deal yet. I really don't think so. Then to the second uh, game, it was um, yesterday evening, so I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon, in uh, Berlin was of course the uh, German Cup final. And what a crazy final that was. Uh, it ended with the first title for RB Leipzig and it's actually funny that I have both <laughs> black away jerseys up there of those teams that played in home jerseys. Um, I gotta tell you, this was one of the more remarkable finals. Not necessarily that it go went this way. I also have to say that um, while the Wembley final is still the standout, for me, ever since they went to, 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 to New Wembley, it lost something. How they, the whole setting in the Olympia Stadi uh, Olympia Stadion in Berlin, how they set this up, I mean, it reminds me so much of Wembley. Yes, there's a lot of flags and, uh, you know, with the Olympic uh, Stadium having a kind of shady, shady history here and there. But I really li like that they went in through this uh, marathon gate. No, 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 the players come from somewhere else. They all went through the marathon. They had the long walk, like in the old Wembley, from, the, um, uh, beh from behind the goal, you know, the curve. They walked onto the pitch and you could, and they're looking left and right. You could see the players taking the atmosphere. Full stadium. 
and that is Freiburg and especially Leipzig, who don't pull as many people, but it still was a full stadium, and especially Freiburg, I mean, they had 40,000 people there, and of course, all in the nice uh, Hertha home curve, uh, absolutely amazing scenes, and I have to, I have to say, the way that the uh, uh, DFB has actually made this cup into an event, and you know, they started, I think in 87 was the first one in, Ber in Berlin um, and it needed to grow a little bit. But uh, the German Cup final for me at this moment is in terms of weightiness right up there with the FA Cup. If not more, because every German team is actually taking this really, really serious, this competition. Uh, to a degree that I don't see in any other league. Honestly, this is a uh, this is a, a proper 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 event. Yes, the Italian Cup final also, but uh, there is not this allure of the underdog. You know, if you if you uh, have Juve and Inter play in uh, Rome, you gotta get a full stadium because those those um, teams bring fans. But again, this was Freiburg and this was uh, was Leipzig. Yes, they have very strong local fan bases, but getting forty thousand people from the southwest. Uh, out the southwest of Germany, up to Berlin. It's a major feat. I don't think this would have uh, this would happen anywhere except for England. And again, I think to me the FA Cup final is still the gold standard in many ways. However, this is very, 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 very close. And uh, and, and I think the setting, having this uh, renovated uh, Olympia Stadion, makes a huge difference. There is a certain weight to that final that I don't feel for the FA Cup final uh, that much any, any, anymore. The game itself had a brilliant, an absolute brilliant first half for Freiburg and Leipzig really couldn't get going. I mean, uh, it started off, you know, uh, yes, a little bit typ typically final, um, everyone kind of uh, avoiding mistakes. However, it was Freiburg that really got um, Leipzig into trouble. And even got, and then got the first goal in the ninth, ninth, ninth minute when Salah, um, you know, he tries to control the ball. It goes off the, off his hand, first foot and hand, and then uh, falls to Eggestein who puts it in. Violent protest. And did this was another a sign of this cup final. Violent protest by Leipzig all through. To the point where, yes, I was also already pro Freiburg in this final. But that really annoyed me. How the, how, um nasty the Leipzig players were towards the referee who actually I think had a pretty good game. Now why did that hand play not not matter? Because it comes from a foot onto his hand. If Charlotte would have scored the goal afterwards it would have been taken away because it immediate uh, hand play it was an instrument to that goal. However since this did not happen it was then an inadvertent hand, uh, hand play and the ball falls to Eggestein, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely co 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 correct. And on the broadcast, they really cleared this up very, very, very nicely. Um, I don't want to say that Freiburg could, would have deserved a two-goal lead at the half, but they had a really good first half. And it looked for the next half an hour like Freiburg is going to cruise home with that cup. Even uh, more so that in the 57th minute, um, Halstenberg pulls down a Freiburg player. Uh, yes, maybe he tripped over himself, but uh, that, 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 that was a clear foul. If I saw it, he had to be, uh, this had to be a, a, a red card. And it also started, uh, you know, who annoyed me the most was Simaka. Uh, and I have a little eye on him because Milan really wanted to have him, I think a couple of seasons ago. And I'm so glad because he, uh, that they didn't get him because he's not the type of player that I want uh, uh, to be at Milan. One goal up, then a huge chance, a free kick that just went on, on, on to the outside netting and then Freiburg controlled that game and you really thought they're going to play at home. They even had a chance to make it too. Um, however, Soboschlag came on, Mukiele came on, Dani Olmo came on. Um, and then there was a corner kick where Willy Orban um, wins the header and in, 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 in such a way it was really, really hard for Freiburg goalie uh, to get there. And Kunku is there to put it into it. And suddenly Leipzig had the upper momentum. This was the first time that something went pro Leipzig. Um, up until the point. There were Bengalos from the Freiburg fans all over. I mean, this was the one thing they were constantly saying. Please don't do uh, any, uh, no flares, no flares, no, no flares. Nothing from the Leipzig fans. Then they start suddenly start putting them up. And suddenly they're also 
scoring. So it is 1 1, and at that point, with a man down, Kam coming back, I thought, yeah, okay, this might be a little bit of a freak show. However, uh, at that point, then really Leipzig uh, controlled the game and even had a call for a penalty late, on which I, yes, it was it was played, uh, the ball was touched. I think so, the right decision was made, but uh, if the referee in full uh, in full play decides that this is a penalty, I'm not sure if he that there, there's enough to overturn it, honestly. Um, so yeah, Freiburg going uh, going a little bit with a shaky feeling. It, 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 they definitely need Tate to, to get the thing under on, on control again. Overtime, however, was a much more even affair. And again, Leipzig playing with a man less. It was a much more even affair. However, the chances were all with Freiburg, who hit the woodwork three times. And Demirovic came, came on. He had, uh, I think, early in the, uh, in, in, in the first half. He had an absolute sitter after uh, the post was hit. He has a wide open net and he puts it over the bar after having already in reg regulation a free header directly onto um, the goalie. And I thought this does not bode well for the penalties. And then the penalties, uh, there is a theme as, 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 as of late. First, the end of one side is chosen, then that side also takes the first shot um, in the FA Cup final and in the Europa League final that the other team won. So uh, this was my hope, but I on, honestly said, uh, with Goli Gulacci, I thought Leipzig have the advantage. I did not trust the Freie, Freiburg goalie, uh, who I actually don't have now, uh, escapes me. In any case, uh, Leipzig, absolutely uh, perfect. Günther who had had only one coach in his whole life, which was Streich, the Freif, the, the Freif coach, puts it over the bar, he's the captain, and then Demirovic hits it against the crossbar again. So four times the crossbar for, 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 for Freiburg, and it, it really feels like, for Leipzig it was the third final. They had never won it. To me, it really felt like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for Freiburg to win this cup. And that would have been so sweet, especially on the back of the Frankfurt triumph. Nah, Leip, Leip, Leipzig wins it. I turned the fight. I turned. I didn't watch the ceremonies after, afterwards. I turned it off in disgust. Not that I'm so. I mean, I think that a Red Bull getting into Leipzig is not such a bad idea because it's a region that really needs to be lifted uh, with uh, good soccer. But I still cannot get really behind the Red Bull scheme. And I was really dejected for Freiburg because I really felt that they didn't really deserve losing that final. They were the better team. And still, they lost. It's cruel, 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 this game, I gotta say. Let's go over to Austria. I promised you drama, you'll get drama. Uh, you just see here the result. The first result is already the big one. Alta had a must-win game against Admira Vaca. And they won it 3-0. A game that if they would have gotten only one point, they would have been relegated. This was the game that they needed to win. And uh, with the way that the other results fell, with uh, Lars getting a rather lucky draw against Reed, although they, were, they could have gotten a penalty lay, laid on. Uh, but Reed were the better team uh, for most of, of the time, only the last half, half hour. So the coach Didi Kuba starting out with two draws and, you know, uh, still kind of the old mistakes. I mean, the first goal was an own goal again. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that one won. And then Hartberg losing to Tirol meant that Alter had it all in their own hands suddenly. What a huge, huge, huge result and what a huge swing of events right there. Suddenly Hartberg could go down. Suddenly Admira, who not just a few weeks ago were first place, they could go down. Alter, who uh, finished, I, I, I think, with quite the deficit because of having the points, they suddenly were in contention that they never should have been. Even Reed, who almost made into the qualification round uh, in, in, in the top six, they were just uh, a few minutes away to make it into the top, top six. They also could get relegated. An absolute mad, mad format. The 1-1 one, one for Lask meant that you cannot get relegated. And you cannot believe what a relief that was for me. On the bottom, uh, the big one was that Austria Vienna was winning against Klagenfurt and Wolfsburg beating Sturm. Sturm Graz, who already have second place secured. And Salzburg still showing up a little bit and making them very uh, well, um, making them, uh, many favors to the Rapid crowd and winning 1 0. 
Meaning that Rapidna was in a real, real pickle. So if you look at the standings here, Rapidna in fourth place, they had a head to head against Wolfsburg coming up. So not easy for them. Whereas Austria Vienna suddenly look rather convincingly and fine in this third spot. And as I said, on the bottom, it was pure pandemonium. Here are the results from the last round. Altach get the win. And I watched this, usually I only watched the last game. I watched this going back and forth the conference. They started in Altach in the, in, in the third minute, Nimaga, with an absolutely crazy goal. Puts Altach ahead. At this very point, it was Hartberg who were going down. Then, two minutes later, Hartberg score. Now it is Reed who are going down. And then for 10 minutes it stayed like that until Hussein Balish scored a goal for Lusk. And at that point Admira were the last place team and they wouldn't leave that spot anymore. Uh, Lusk actually for once played convincing, had a 3 nil it after had uh, two Balic goals in short within five minutes and going in the 33rd. Um, in Altach, uh, Strauss actually doubled the lead in the 52nd. Uh, seemingly getting Altak safe, however, then Nimara gets sent off with a yellow red. And uh, Tyrol, who have been saving all their good players, first team players, for the playoff game on Monday, that since Lask now won, will be at Lask in Tyrol. Talk about that in a second. Um, they suddenly put on a few of their starters, like Vrioni and Savica, and it's Vrioni who pulls one back. And then it got nervous in Altak because. If Altach don't win this one, they are not staying in the league. Over in Hartberg, Reed uh, equalized through Chavi, so that game was done and didn't matter. And anymore, it was only between Altach and Admira, whoever goes down. And in the end, Altach hang on by a thread. And Admira have to go down. Now, um, I always say that Admira is probably, of all the teams in the, in the Bundesliga, they are probably the one where I would point to. Yeah, yes, tradition. They have been 11 years in the league. They have been there forever. I would say they are just on the outskirts of Vienna and they barely ever had a fan base. Now they have slowly been building one because, you know, there is a little bit more um, uh, building in that area. And uh, now, um, you know, uh, there, there is a youth, there, 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 there's more youth there and so on. They, of course, go to the local team. Also, Admira is in so far a very important team in Austria as they are probably the premier uh, youth development uh, team prior to the arrival of Red Bull. And they still are many of the best players, especially for all from, from the Vienna region, uh, come through the Admira Academy. So in that sense, it is always sad. It's also sad that Andy Herzog, who actually had with Admira a pretty good season overall, it's just the format that killed them, that he in his first season as a proper uh, club coach has to get relegated. I, it just feels a little bit not right. On the other side, as I said, I think Alta have been building something. Uh, they built a new stadium. They are the force in Vorarlberg. However, from the... Second league, it is now locally rivals Luster now coming up. So we'll have Darby's there. Uh, and there the story is, and this also ties in with Tyrol now. Uh, something that I need to, uh, is very, very, very important as, as well. So Luster now win that league. However, this was hanging on a thread. Because Wacker Innsbruck are in dire financial trouble. They did not get any playing license for the pros. At this point, it's not even decided, will they play, uh, can they play in the third tier? Or do they have to go fourth or even deeper? Because it's not uh, secure, in, and nothing is really secured yet there. Um, the key was that with three games to go, it was not sure if they even have enough money to keep uh, to keep playing games. To the point where a sponsor of Lustenau paid for the bus ride from Innsbruck to Lustenau, which is a roughly two hour bus ride, for the simple reason that if Tyrol cannot complete the season, all of their games are voided and suddenly um, um, Lucena would draw level with the second place team which would be uh, FAC uh, from Favoriten in Vienna which is something I didn't want to have at all. So uh, kind of an interesting story. So yeah, it means that Altax stay up 
uh, I think they are becoming institution. I never liked the away games in Fallback because they are a real pain in a way. But on the on, on the other side, it's a, it, it, it's a region that deserves it. The West in Austria was typically always a little bit underrepresented. Now it's the East that gets a little bit lost. But yeah, Lask secured this playoff against Tirol. Uh, before we get to the playoff, um, up... We had a big result, Austria Vienna, again, beating Sturm Graz with nothing to play for. 4-2, securing the third spot, and Austria Vienna will start with a deficit, points deficit the next season, although I'm not sure if this will uphold. It says a six points deficit. Now that they can secure Europa League and they're also in financial trouble, that actually will make them breathe a little easier, honestly, because they have a, a group stage, a, the conference group stage already guaranteed. And then in the head-to-head, -head, Wolfsburg beat Rapid 2-1. Marco Grull gave Rapid the lead at the half. However, they cannot hang on. And uh, in the 74th, Baribo and then Jajic uh, in the 76th. Turn it around for Wolfsburg, leapfrogging Rapid Vienna in the uh, process. And with that, we have now uh, the final uh, league table. You see uh, Red Bull and Sturm were or Secured Austria Vienna go into the Europa League. Uh, then the Conference League, the fixed spot is now uh, for uh, Wolfsburg, who then uh, Rapid have to go and go into the playoffs where they beat uh, Tirol and Lask. You see Alta, who were 12th, suddenly go all the way up to 9th because everyone is even there. Everyone is even uh, absolute madness. Just look at uh, Alta, has, it has 7 wins and 8 draws. That's a not good. I mean, Admira Wacker, uh, just uh, 6 and 13, they have actually a better um, account than Alta have, and Alta stay in the league. It's, it's a mad system. It's absolutely a mad system. As I said, Tirol and Lask will meet. You see uh, who will make it. Uh, um, they are not, Lask are not favorite, favorite to Tirol, but they have better chances against Rapid. Uh, where, of course, Didi Kubo just was coached, so they, that would be something. Now, how is the playoff being played? As I said, on uh, Monday, Lask have to travel to Tirol. It's a very tight schedule. Then on Thursday, you have to play a home against, against Rapid. And then an away game against Rapid. The only thing I can say is that they are somewhat used to that due to the Europa League, but I'm not very happy with that. Uh, especially against Rapid, where we couldn't do anything anytime. So yeah, that's it. The last uh, official review video. As I said, there will be a big playoff video coming up. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Drop a comment below to tell me what you thought about the happenings there. I would be most interested in what you think about the Austrian league system. I find it's absolute madness. But also if you have any thoughts on uh, the DFB Pokal final or the relegation there. All thoughts are very welcome. Any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!